and welcome to the 26th meeting of the Health and Sport Committee in 2018. Um, we have, of course, already considered a couple of items uh, in private session and we have had uh, informal uh, advice also to inform our scrutiny of the Human Tissue Authorisation Scotland Bill. Uh, that scrutiny will commence in public on Tuesday the 6th of November, two weeks uh, from today. Agenda item three is consideration of a further proposal by the Scottish Government to consent to the UK Government legislating using the powers under the European Union Withdrawal Act in relation to three UK statutory instruments. These are the Human Tissue Quality and Safety for Human Application Amendment EU Exit Regulations, the Quality and Safety of Organs Intended for Transplantation Amendment EU Exit Regulations, and the Blood Safety and Quality Amendment EU Exit Regulations. As we uh, discussed and agreed uh, at an earlier meeting, I wrote to stakeholders and to the Scottish Government seeking further information. Uh, responses have now been received and have been circulated to members, uh, and I hope members have had the opportunity to have a look at those. We have until the 10th of November to respond to the Scottish Government uh, and to determine our approach, uh, and uh, we should uh, 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 therefore uh, consider that matter today. The question is simply on the basis of the responses we've had from stakeholders, whether members feel uh, that we have sufficient evidence to confirm uh, that we're content for the Scottish Government to give its consent to the uh, statutory instruments in this way, uh, to be passed by the UK Government or to take further evidence. Do members have a view on the basis of the responses we've received? Thanks, Keith. I, I think it's uh, quite unsatisfactory what's uh, happening here because what you have is we've had to, you've had the right convener to find it from the Scottish Government, uh, but what we've got back from them, certainly in relation to the letter from the 20th of September, is their best guess as to what, should, as to what the Department of Health and Social Care is going to do. So... The UK government has failed to give advance notice. We're asking the Scottish government to try and guess at what might happen and take a decision based on that. Now, even if the Scottish government professes itself satisfied that it's got enough time and is content with what's proposed, I don't think it's good enough for this committee to expect that we have to rely on what the best guess is of the Scottish government about what the UK government will do. It's not the proper basis on which to take decisions, in, in my view. Enough. Other views, Sandra? Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. And that was one of the issues that I was going to point out as well. I did raise previously to um, the time scale for one thing and the lack of uh, proper replies back from, uh, obviously, Westminster as well. But one of the other concerns that's came through, and I note that most of the organisations have said we need to go forward and we have to work together. But the Anthony Nolan Trust has raised an awful lot of issues which... Um, basically will affect them terribly and they, they are the, the, the main recipients and, and of you know organs and tissues main importer and importer and yet they raise lots of things about the regulations are relevant you know stem cells it requires them to basically look, for, look forward bureaucracy etc etc uh, i mean i would really like to perhaps hear more from the anthony nolan trust because they have raised an awful lot of issues uh, which I think um, are important issues in, in this regard. Other views, Emma? Thank you, Convener. I do have concerns about some of the issues because in the General Food Law EU Regulations 2018, it talks about the explanation of law. Yeah, we'll come to those in a moment. Uh, oh, right, uh, OK. Uh, uh, so uh, let's stick to the human tissue and, okay. and blood safety ones. Uh, at the moment. I think you're right that there are some serious okay. issues with that, but that is the next agenda item. Uh, Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Gina. I think uh, looking at the response from the Scottish Government, um, there is that uh, offer from the Minister to uh, update the committee once the final SLS um, has been laid in the UK Parliament. Do, do, we have a, do we have an understanding of when what that timing would be? What I can tell you is that the first of these regulations that we were asked to consider was on the basis that it would be laid in the UK Parliament um, by the 10th of October, and that has not actually happened. That's not one of these, but it's a previous one, and I, I do think it suggests that the concerns that have been highlighted about the timetabling of, of these is, are, 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 are well-founded. Um, so so I, think, I think 
I, I, although, there, although the UK government has indicated to the Scottish government what their expected timetable is, they're not bound by that, and I think that's yeah, one of the problems. Because we have 28 here. days to consider this. Mm -hmm. my, my, I think my, my point would be that if, if we were going to ha if, if they're going to give us the final SLS within that time frame, that would give us the opportunity to to postpone the decision. But if we have to make a decision, yeah, we have we have 28 days in this one. That's why we have until the 10th of November to make yeah. a, to make a response. Um, and um, um, what we could we've 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 sought evidence from other stakeholders. Yeah. If we wanted, if we didn't feel that was sufficient on which to make a decision, we could choose today to invite the minister to attend between now and the 10th of November in order to ask some of the questions that have been raised today. Alex? I was also struck by Sandra White's suggestion that she'd like to hear more from the Anthony Nolan Trust and wondered if there was capacity within the uh, work programme in that time frame to bring them in. The, 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 the work programme, as, as we have discovered it's today, is already different. pretty full, um, yeah. and I think that would be difficult. We've asked for their evidence. If there is additional evidence, we feel we would like them to provide in correspondence that we could then raise with the minister if it was the minister that we chose to okay. uh, seek further information on, then clearly we could do that. Keith. Brian's point, but I think the issue is that even if we get the minister, Scottish Government Minister to come and update us, that's not going to give us 28 days to consider, because what we're operating on is their current best guess as to what this is going to contain. If that's the case, and if the information that we need in order to take a decision requires the UK government to provide that information, and in a different context they haven't done that when they said we were previously, why should we not be asking the relevant minister of the UK government to come and explain what they intend to put in this and why it's late? There is no... Um, well, the accountability here clearly is the Scottish government. It's the Scottish Parliament. Um, as the Scottish Parliament, we have to make recommendations in relation to... But other committees regularly have oh, sure. invite UK Absolutely. ministers. And how, how, can we, how can we hold the Scottish Government accountable if they're not being given the information? Completely understand the point. What I would simply suggest, and I'm not saying we, we, we shouldn't or couldn't do that, what I would suggest is that the next item of the agenda, which Emma's referred to, is one where the, uh, the problem is that much greater uh, and where the UK Government has not um, provided the necessary 28 days um, uh, for consideration. So it may be in the round that we... We, might, we may deem that that's a more appropriate uh, item on which to take that kind of position, but that is, that is a matter for the committee. I, 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 I'm not saying we couldn't do it for this one too, but I think, I think the next item where they have failed to provide the necessary 28 days to the Scottish Government, I think, is, is, is all the more... Would that likely to be the same minister, do you know, convener, do you think? Um, it's to do with food safety, right. um, so it would be, this, it'd be the, uh, certainly be the same Scottish Government minister. Yes, that, so that takes us. Do we wish to take further evidence on this matter before we proceed? Either by seeking further written evidence or by asking the Scottish Government Minister to attend. It's the source of where we're not getting the information from. Whether we ask the Minister to come or not, we have to. This seems utterly pointless to me to get a Scottish Government Minister in here berate them over information they've not been provided with. I just don't see the, the logic of that. It's where the information is not coming from, we should be concentrating on. And that's aside from the issues that Sandra White's raised as well. The relevant minister, you know... Of the UK for, government, we, we yes, certainly can. We can do that if we can't get them to come to the committee then. We can't oblige him to attend the committee, but, 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 but we can let him know that we are, uh, or, yeah. or, or, or her know that we are discontented with the failure to provide mm -hmm. the necessary mm -hmm. information to the Scottish mm -hmm. government, to allow the Scottish government to respond to us. Would, 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 that, would that approach command... Support. Yeah, and we write to the relevant UK government minister and press them to respond, to, to provide the necessary information to the Scottish government so that we can be fully informed before we are required to make a report on these regulations. Yeah, is that, great. Is that agreed? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item four, again, uh, a further proposal by the Scottish government to consent to the UK government legislating uh, using uh, the same powers in relation to five UK statutory instruments. These are the General Food Law EU Exit Regulations, the General Foodstuffs Hygiene EU Exit Regulations, the Specific Foodstuffs Hygiene EU Exit Regulations, the Contaminants in Food EU Exit Regulations, and the Quick Frozen Food EU, regulation, EU Exit Regulations. There are a number of points, again, on these matters which re clearly require clarification 
Um, uh, I took an executive decision in light of the timescale to ask that we seek that clarification in advance of this meeting. So those le that letter um, has been uh, sent and uh, will be available to colleagues. The UK government indicated that they propose to lay these instruments between the 31st of October and the 5th of November. In this instance, they have not taken into account the fact that the Scottish Parliament has been in recess for two weeks um, in October, and therefore they are not providing us with the 28 days that was an agreed um, uh, provision for these for regulations of this type. That means the committee has uh, 10 days to consider because of the, the timing from the UK government. Um, and so we, the, our, our um, first decision is, I think, whether we think that's acceptable and that the 10 day notice is adequate in the circumstances. There, there's no obvious reason, um, there's no obvious explanation for their timetable other than the fact that they have, um, they're operating to a Westminster uh, uh, parliamentary schedule. Um, so there's no other legal consequence of, of, of had they followed the 28 days rather than the, the, the 10 days. So that's the first question. Um, and again, I think we may wish to consider hearing, seeking further information uh, and possibly also uh, 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 seeking the, the Minister of the Scottish Government to attend either on the 30th of October to meet the UK Government's timetable or at a later date uh, within the 28 days that they ought to have provided according to the protocol. So those are the questions uh, on these regulations. Uh, Brian, and then I know Emma had uh, wanted to speak. On that then, if, if, we're, if, we're going to, if we're going to look at it within the, the 28 days which, which the protocol would suggest, would it be the committee's um, desire then to write to the UK Minister to indicate that that's, that that's what we would expect? That is certainly open to us. The first thing we would have to do is respond to the Scottish Government and say that we were not content um, to okay. that they should uh, consent to that legislation in, in less than 28 days. Okay. Emma. Yes, thank you, Convener. My issue is the, the we're being asked, or the, the Scottish Government has been asked to consent to UK ministers making regulations, but in light of the One Cow BSE episode in the Aberdeen farm, when we're looking at traceability of food and um, the overarching food and feed safety and traceability requirements and associated responsibilities in food and feed businesses, I think this warrants some further investigation. I think that's probably a view that I, I, I'm looking around the committee. I think that is generally agreed um, that, that this, this is significant enough to warrant some further investigation. Um, uh, we have already written to seek some clarification on the proposal, um, but I think we may also wish to um, ask the clerks if it's possible to accommodate a uh, uh, session with the minister on this within the 28 days, if not the 10 days that have been set out. David? The, we, we can always accommodate um, emergency or urgent pieces of information the knock-on effect would likely be to the, the timing of the committee or the time available at this stage to take evidence on the Human Tissue Authorisation Scotland Bill. Okay, that's that's understood, and I think uh, uh, clearly, clearly, uh, that's a, a substantial piece of business that's before us, and that uh, we would all take seriously. Um, however, I do think I do think we should we should uh, seek further information. We don't need to make that decision today. Unless we, unless our decision is to accept the ten day, the ten days that we've been allowed by the UK government's timetable. I, I accept what you're saying, and you've already written. I think it's, it's so important that this this committee basically, you know, we've got a job to do, and I don't think we'd do it properly if we didn't hear evidence. So rather than kick it into the long grass again, I would prefer to say no one we're not complying with the ten days. It will be the twenty eight days, and we have. Word either by letter or a minister from Westminster, the UK government, coming here to give evidence on that particular issue in regards to the, the BSE. So I, rather than put it back, I'd rather just go for it just now. Okay. 
uh, Miles. More general point. Because it's obviously looking at our work programme. These SSIs are going to be coming thick and fast. Now, we as a committee had appointed two EU rapporteurs to keep an eye on this and to update committee on as this progresses. <coughs> And I, I, you know, I agree, I don't think it's ex acceptable that we've just got 10 days to look at this, but I think how we've tried to, as a committee function, to keep on top of these as they come forward is something we also need to consider, because you know, this is the first two major ones which we've got in front of us. We can see from the work programme there's lots more coming, so I think it's important that we start to plan and timetable properly um, as ourselves as well. I completely agree with that, but at the same time, there has been a <coughs> protocol ag agreed between the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament which says in, in the ordinary course of events there should be a 28-day period. No, and I think while we would not want to be interrogating in detail every regulation if we, if, unless we have to, uh, at the same time, I think there's a, a point of principle here about the, the pro protocol and the timetabling that means we should treat this a little bit differently. Keith? Yeah, I entirely agree with that point. I mean, I, I don't know enough about the previous discussion on the anti nolan stuff or about what Emma's saying about the BSE case, if that raises genuine concerns. My more con um, greater concern is the principle of it. I mean, how, how is this committee meant to be planning and timetabling its affairs if we can't rely on the primary source of information to be complied with? And it seems to me to be more than that. They've known 28 days, they've given 10, they've given no reason or justification for why it's going to be at a lesser time or why they haven't complied with this. That That is the point and the issue here. And if there is to be a series of further ones, then the least we can expect from the Westminster Government is it gets its act together and gives us the information, forget the Scottish Government, that this committee needs to have. And it's not doing that. I think it's treating this place with contempt. I think we've got to get to the source of that. Uh, the point is understood. I mean, I think I think the, the 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 process, nonetheless, of bringing forward these matters for the committee's consideration does lie with the Scottish Government. I will be meeting as convener with the Minister for Parliamentary Business in a few days' time. I will certainly have a discussion around this and uh, around the implications for our, our future business. I think what you've said is is, is absolutely right. Um, but I think we should seek further information. We should indicate that we're not content with the uh, schedule that has been put in front of us uh, and we should uh, on the ba basis of that further information make a decision when that information comes back as to whether we need to seek uh, attendance by the minister or indeed by a UK minister in due course. Is that agreed? Yep. Excellent. Thank you very much colleagues. Um, we are now, uh, that completes our public session of the committee. Um,